every drop is brewed especially to suit the modern taste. Bavarian's is for your man and you too. America's fastest growing beer. We like it. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to The Unfiltered Gentleman. And now, with a higher BAC than your ABV, Greg, Ali, Scott, and Dan. Or some mixture of that. Welcome in, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thanks for joining. We are The Unfiltered Gentleman, podcast centered around craft beer, you know, the liquid, the lifestyle, and everything else in between. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome on in. Grab yourself a beer and settle in. Uh, If uh, you're new to the show, we love interaction. Hit us up on the socials, The Unfiltered Gentleman. Call us, 805-538-BEER. We like to hang out. Uh, I am Greg. Sitting with me today is uh, No Fancy Name Scott. Hey, no fancy here. That's right. And uh, also No Fancy Name is uh, Brian. Hey, I'm here for the lifestyle. (laughs) (laughs) Glad to hear it. And I'm glad you're you're wearing clothes today. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. Uh, People are like, why do they always talk about Brian and his lack of clothing? Yeah, uh, why do they, Greg? <laughs> we we should fill people in. Uh, back in the day, we did uh, drunk stories live from uh, Integrands. I think it was Frillings Fest, and Brian was nice enough to give us a drunk story. And one of them involved, in his words, being sans clothes. And so that's been the joke ever since. And and uh, we can't get enough of Brian being sans clothes. Neither can my wife. Whoa! Uh, if we haven't scared you off already, I'm so sorry. Thank you for joining. Thank you for listening. Uh, huge shout out to Colorado Springs, Colorado. What's up, peeps out there? I got some family out there. I wonder if uh, they felt bad at the download a few times. But they were our top listening city of last week. And uh, like I said, if you're on the grams and you're hitting us up, don't forget to hashtag show us your beers. And also rate and subscribe when you're on uh, whatever podcast app it is you're listening to. We have a lot to get to tonight. Some, uh, of course, beer reviews. I did something that I'm very excited to share. That sounds almost dirty. Uh, we got some booze news to get to. I'm going to be talking about a beer from Colorado. I figured it was only right and so much more. But let's kick things off with a little bit of hydration. Grab your libations, pals. It's time for Beer of the Week. And if you're drinking well, you know that you're my friend. And I'll say, I think I'll have myself a beer. Actually, half an hour selves a beer. Brian told me what he was going to be drinking tonight. And I went, I think I have one of those in the fridge. And I did. So we are drinking a Pizza Port Brewing Taste for Adventure IPA. 7% has 65 IBUs and a 3.9 and untapped. They say, brewed to showcase some amazing new experimental hops, Sabro and HBC 586. Sabro provides, provides coconut, sandalwood, and citrus. HBC 586 gives pineapple, melon, and berry. Simcoe and Crystal round out the hop aroma with bright grapefruit and floral aroma. Balancing the hops is California-grown wheat wheat from Admiral Maltings and some flaked oats. Our La Cruda yeast gives the beer a dry, crisp, clean finish. It could just be crude. I kind of could have put too much accent on there. Anyways, Brian, tell us what you're thinking about Taste for Adventure. You know, uh, I'm I'm pretty impressed by it. I am not a huge fan of... Uh, pizza port beers in general although I guess I'm coming around um, mm-hmm. usually I'm like a port lost Abbey guy if I'm picking a port you know uh, but picking a on port this, in the sea. if I'm picking a port in the sea I'm usually going port uh, you know port brewing but sure. port uh, pizza port's good uh, this beer it's pretty complex um, I like the wheat malt uh, gives it a light color light body very crisp, very smooth, um, and then on on the flavor, I'm definitely getting more of that melon um, and a little bit of that citrus coming off of the Simcoe uh, and the Sabro, I think you said, but yeah, yeah but I, I, I'm I definitely getting a little bit fruitier than I'm used to in a, in a traditional West Coast, but uh, other than that, I can't complain, and no aftertaste on it, it drinks super clean, super smooth. Yeah, this is definitely an easy drinker. You know, looking at it, it's almost got like a uh, pilsnery quality to it. It's extremely clear. Lots of bubbles coming up there. Uh, not a lot on my nose, on my sniffer, but maybe I don't have the world's best sniffer. 
Uh, Flavor-wise, I'm with you there. It cleans up real nice. Uh, doesn't leave a lot of lingering flavor. Hits you up front with a little bit of citrus, or hits me up front with a little bit of citrus. Uh, and then as, as soon as that goes away, the dank starts to move in, kind of cleans up the tongue, doesn't leave too much behind. Uh, definitely West Coast in style, clean, crisp. Um, and I'd say it's a little uh, a little dangerous, excuse me, dangerous at 7%. This, this drink's more like a pale ale to me than a 7%er. Yeah, it definitely doesn't drink like the ABV. So uh, th- I think that's a good thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's I mean, it's a great thing unless, you know, you're uh, a lightweight or something like that. I, I think we can all handle our booze here, though. Very nice. Yeah, you know, I got this one thanks to the uh, Brewer's Box from the San Diego Brewer's Guild. Uh, this was one of the ones that was included. We've been doing some fundraising for the, the California Craft Brewer's Guild for the last uh, about a month or so, they had we just wrapped up California Craft Beer Week. They're still taking donations. If you guys head over to our Instagram, the Unfiltered Gentleman, click the link in our bio. There's a link to donate to the. Uh, well, our link goes to the Central Coast Brewers Guild, but all the money goes to uh, the California Craft Brewers Guild as a whole, and it goes to people working at breweries and restaurants to help support them during the Rona. So if you're looking to do a th- good thing, words are hard tonight. If you're looking to do a good thing, head over to our bio on the gram, click that and uh, go, go give some money to the guilds. It's a good thing to make you feel good about yourself. So they say, amen. Yes. All right. Let's, uh, let's discuss a few things. Have a grievance to share. It's time for a crotch talk. You know, I don't think I have any grievances. A few things to mention. First, I wanted to give a shout out to Bob over at hen house brewing. They're up in NorCal. He had me on their 5 o'clock somewhere show on Friday. We had a lot of fun. He uh, sent down a couple of Hen House beers. We drank them. They were phenomenal. It was my first experience with Hen House. Don't really see them too much down here in Southern California. We had the, one of their IPAs and one of their uh, lagers, the Hellas Lager. Really, really good. The IPA was really, really nice and easy to drink. We just kind of hung out and, and, and talked uh, beer for an hour, and he was a great guy to hang out with. We took some questions from the people on Instagram live that were giving questions. So anyways, shout out to Hen House Brewing. I'm sorry I hadn't gotten to them sooner. They're not easy to find out here, but if you guys have Hen House Brewing in your region, like definitely look them up. Uh, they're in NorCal. They're, I believe, in Santa Rosa. I believe they're in that uh, Russian River area. So give them a try. Any, any of you guys had Hen House before? I haven't, no. I haven't yet, but Deb and I definitely caught some of that Instagram. Uh, I don't know what you call it. Live, live, yeah, Instagram live meeting. Uh, and I gotta say, I was impressed. Uh, he was super animated and it kind of made me want to try their beers. So, right. uh, you know, maybe I'm gonna check out their website and see what I can do, or you know, find somebody up in NorCal who maybe would work a trade with me. But yeah, that was super awesome that you did that. So, thank you, Greg. And, and oh, yeah, uh, you know, thanks to everybody at Hen House for, for making that happen. Yeah, that was fun. And I do believe, I guess I could have done my research. I do believe they're shipping throughout California. So if you're like us and you're in California, uh, I think you can get your ha- your hands on Hen House fairly easily. And uh, it's worth it. I, I had the logger in the IP. Like I said, uh, our friend Coley, she's had one of their sours, said it was really good. So uh, be on the lookout for them. They're coming up. Also, I wanted to mention, God damn, was I so excited for this. Uh, today, as we record... I got the chance to sit down in person with Ant and Ollie from Poseidon Brewing, uh, the the head brewer slash owner, and then uh, I guess he's technically an assistant brewer, but he does really all the work. I uh, got to go out there, Ventura, California, sit down and have an interview with those guys. It's our first, I realized, I looked it up, our first in-person interview since 2019. Our last in-person interview was with um, Alyssa at Jagged Mountain in Denver there. Wow. I'm sure you guys have both had Poseidon. They are turning out some great beer. Yeah, I wish they I wish they were more available in the bottle shops and stuff. But yeah. I think, you know, I've only had them at the brewery. You know, we talked about that. And because of COVID, they're doing a heck of a lot more canning nowadays. And I, I think you'll, you'll see them popping up a little bit more in the bottle shop. But they're actually <laughs> struggling to keep up with the demand. Since COVID started, everybody wants cans. They are canning so much more now. I think he said something like five times more than they used to. Used to be like, a, oh, I'll take a couple cans to go because I like the beer. And now it's like people are actually coming to get cans of beer, you know, for their nightly drinking needs. And uh, they're, they're having a hard time keeping up. So my guess is they're not branching out super wide into bottle shops so much yet, but um, they're, they're doing their best and they're upgrading some of their gear to try and keep up with demand because it's kind of the new thing, especially ever since Rona, you, you basically have to distribute in one way or another. Otherwise, people aren't going to get you. 
but it was it was great. We were very socially distanced and and all that stuff. We uh, we had three little tables that were all separated from each other. And uh, after I set up all the audio gear, you know, wiped everything down with the Clorox wipes. Did it before all the people got there, all the uh, all the guests got there to start drinking. We did it in the morning, which you know, never a bad day when you have to start drinking at ten thirty in the morning. Mm-mm. They were great. They were great to hang. All these, <laughs> I told all these got to write like a book of all isms because. Every other thing was just a, another fucking one-liner from Ollie. So um, he was great. He's he's from South Carolina. He's got that twang. And uh, Ant is a nerd, a beer nerd. So a lot of fun. Um, if you haven't had Poseidon, but you're in the area, if you're in the Ventura County area, highly, highly recommend. I, I was thinking about it, and I don't know about you, Brian. Scott, have you been to Poseidon? I have to say, sorry, I have not. I've just kind of been looking at their website and like, wow. Yeah, they they've turned out some good stuff. Brian, you've obviously been to the brewery, right? Yeah, I've been there a few times. It's a small little spot, but how small it is, it's always packed. Mm-hmm. And they also always have a good variety on the menu. I, like, I think the last time I was in there, they had about ten beers on tap. So, yeah, you know, I, I, I honestly, Poseidon's probably one of my favorite beers in Ventura County overall. So. Yeah. What, what were you going for? I'm sorry I cut you off. No, it's perfect. What I was going to go for was I was I was thinking about it on our way over to do the interview. And I realized like they were one of probably two uh, my first like brewery, I don't know, visits in Ventura County, like back before breweries were everywhere. I realized like these guys were original. They were uh, up there in 2013 already going brewing beer. And I thought like them and and Ennegrin were like my yeah, first Yeah, Ennegrin's everyone's number one. Yeah, I think Ennegrin was one, and I think Poseidon was number two. Like, they've been around for quite a while now. Almost, I think uh, they're about to hit seven years at Poseidon. And it's really weird how, I mean, I guess it makes me feel old, but, you know, these, these dates sneak up on you. Like, when I was on the show with you last, we had the five-year Made West. Right. Didn't think that was five years. No. Uh, you know, obviously, Casa Agria. It's been doing their thing for a long time. Institution uh, through a couple different locations, and now they've got that big spot off the 101. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just crazy, you know. And I remember when all these breweries were little nothing joints, you know. But yeah, the beer has just really come along. It's crazy. Yeah, I remember when Institution was that little shithole in a. Business, business park. park. Yeah. Po- you know, you could have like that most 12 people in there and they were never busy. You could bring your own food in. And since they were always so dead, it was like, hey, you want to come back and see the brew house? Like, sure. What the fuck? And we'd always yeah. hang out in the brew house. And, and now they're super popular, huge. You know, that was the other thing. Talking about the tiny tap room at Poseidon, they've actually expanded to one of the neighboring units. And obviously no one's allowed inside right now. But they, because of that, they can have more people outside. And then as they are allowed to start welcoming people in, they're going to have a much bigger tap room. They're working on building it out right now. And he's got some pretty cool plans for it. It used to be a a gym and he's using some of the old equipment for like legs of the tables and that kind of stuff to like incorporate the old building into the new building. It's actually really cool. Wow. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one one thing that impresses me with them, just checking out their website, is they have a pints with a purpose thing going on. Oh yeah. Where they... A lot of the proceeds that they get, they give to charities. That's pretty cool. Yeah, they do a lot of giving back. We talked about that a little bit today, and we talked about how they give back so much that anytime you're at a beer festival that's like not for profit, that's going towards a charity, you are guaranteed to see Poseidon there. And uh, they've always got that grapefruit IPA with them, which is, uh, we talked about it today, real grapefruit and real delicious. So uh, anyways, huge shout out to those guys. That was a lot of fun. And thanks to Vanita for setting it up. And then after we left, we wanted to hit up Topa Topa's new spot in Ventura, mainly to get some cans. Like, we're not really full-fledged dining out yet, even though it's it's just reopened here in our area. So we're like, all right, we're going to stop at Topa. We want to get some cans to go. And we got there, and their new spot is so big, and every table was like a good 50 feet from the next table. They just had this huge, it almost looks like a park. And they have uh, picnic tables and everything. Like, all right, this this is how you do social distancing. So uh, we, we felt pretty good about that. When we stopped in, we had a beer and uh, they had a food truck there, which at least in California, you have to order food if you're going to order beer. So we had a, uh, a Sonora dog, bacon wrap hot dog with like grilled veggies on it. It was delicious. But um, yeah, Topa Topa is doing it right. Poseidon's got a great setup with some social distancing there. They're, they're really taking it seriously, which is nice. So if you're 
if you're on the fence about going out, uh, I say go out. They're they're doing it good over there. Um, Scott, what are you drinking over there? Tonight I am drinking uh, Stone IPA. Oh, rare yeah, find. I, is it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was looking for a rare find. I was searching the world over trying to find something different, and really wasn't having too much luck. And I just came across this, and yeah, hey, you know what? Good go to that I is one of my go tos. So I'll just grab that and drink that. So I mean, it's never going to be wrong. That's for sure. Yeah. I mean, when I'm drinking it, it's just your basic good old IPA. And I, uh, the thought I had about it was it kind of reminded me, you know, for the sports fans, it kind of reminds me of Tim Duncan. He's not flashy, <laughs> not, you know, doesn't do anything, doesn't make the headlines, but just does his job. And that's what this is. Solid. The, Solid. Yeah. The Tim Duncan of IPAs. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> when it came out, it was revolutionary, much like Tim Duncan being right. a center slash power forward until everybody <laughs> decided to do that. Yep. And uh, it's been around forever, just like Tim Duncan was. Yep, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's one of the OGs. Um, and you know what's pretty crazy is it still has a 378 on Untapped and a 94 on Beer Advocate, which for a beer that's been out as long as that one's been out, like that's that's hanging in there pretty well, especially the 94 on Beer Advocate. Like clearly, well, they... can Beer Advocate really downgrade you after they judge your beer? I don't, I mean, that's like based Grapefruit on the Sculpin's probably still a 98 or whatever. Oh, God, it we is. should look that up. Isn't that a cumulative score from everyone else's ratings, though? I don't know. I feel like it's kind of like a cigar aficionado. Once they peg you, (laughs) like, you know, you got that score unless something happens. But maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? Well, I don't know with Beer Advocate because here's the thing. It was just the bros that used to, you know, rate them. And then it became only users and they did on a one to five scale like an untapped. And then they went back to the zero to 100 scale. And I figured when they went back, it was still cumulative from like everyone's reviews. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they went back to you know, just the main people doing the reviews. I don't, I don't know how it works. I would, I don't want some peasants reviewing my beer. Right. <laughs> oh, Come God. on now. Brian, you are, you are so correct. Grapefruit Sculpin has a 96 on beer advocate. What did I tell you? Oh my What'd God. I tell you? Well, we, we can't look at this website anymore. Well, we can't really look at untapped either. Well, at least that's people and not monsters. <laughs> oh, and let's look up pineapple Sculpin. That's like the least Ugh. of all the, Oh, that one's the worst. Also, the habanero, when you get a really weird mixed batch oh and one God. one isn't hot and the other one is like melt your face off. <laughs> that beer almost made me throw up. Throw up. Like I, I started drinking it. Somebody told me it was good. They're like, look, I know you don't like all the fruity sculpins. Try the habanero. And this is probably like four or five years ago. And I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. And I love spicy things. I don't necessarily love spicy beers. I give that a shot. I thought I was going to puke. I couldn't finish anymore. And my stomach hurt for hours after it. Uh, let's see. Pineapple Sculpin has an 89 and they have a 3.8 on untapped. All right. I, we're going to stop just using people's ratings because this is, this is awful. How dare you people? Well, I mean, I think you should at least let people know what, what the ratings are, but just, you know, have a disclaimer that says these ratings don't reflect reality right. and you should listen to me. <laughs> My favorite is, I, I wish I could show people this. If you go to untapped, you type in pineapple Sculpin. Uh, currently, I'm sure this will change. The third picture in is this chick basically throwing up after drinking <laughs> pineapple scope, and that is oh. phenomenal and and uh, rightfully deserved. So, uh, where were we? Oh, Stone IPA. It's a classic, and it was in our very first uh, March Madness tournament, which I don't know how we were going to do March Madness this, this year. <laughs> Being be a challenge. Separate places. So we'll see how that works, unless everyone gets vaccinated in like the next two weeks. Well, don't <laughs> include uh, Pliny the Younger, because nobody's going to be able to get their hands on it. You know what? God damn it. One of my friends slash one of our listeners in Colorado, his name is Davis. He sends me pictures. He's drinking Pliny the Younger. I said, well, how the hell did you get that? He goes, oh, my wife's really good. I was oh, like, wow. Apparently, I need a new wife. What the <laughs> hell? Really good at what? I like getting, you know, she's. he was saying like she's always good for like getting tickets or in this case, Pliny the Younger. I'm like, well, fuck you, man. You can, you in, in Denver are getting Pliny the Younger and uh, out sorry, here. That's sorry, not, that's not what it sounded like you said his wife was good at. Oh, <laughs> sorry. At uh, online purchasing quickly. I don't know what it sounded like. Well, I mean... I guess procurement would be. Yes. Procuring. Yeah. Okay. Beverages. We'll leave it there. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Anyway, enough of my blabbering. Brian, what's going on with you? Man, I am really upset. <laughs> oh, dear. No, I, I usually don't get this upset. And I usually don't think that, you know, 
bad things happen to me. I'm kind of oblivious if any if anyone judges me or does anything to, you know, be a jerk or whatever. I kind of just shrug it off. But sure. today I was socially profiled for being <laughs> fat and bearded and slovenly dressed. I mean, I think I was dressed fine. I was wearing a Pliny the uh, Pliny the Elder hoodie. Oh, see, if it was younger, that would have been a little more fancy. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I was in Westlake and I went to this fancy ass kitchen uh, appliance and, and, you know, kitchen stuff store called Sur le Table, mm. which I looked up and it's French for on the table. Okay, sure. Which makes sense because they have tables in there and there's a lot of shit on them and, you know, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But I walked in because I was looking to get some board cream because my wife got me a really nice cutting board for uh, Valentine's Day. Nice. And you got to put this cream on it to you know take care of it right so that it doesn't like suck after using it five times all i'm so, hearing is she got you wood for valentine's day oh she definitely did but <laughs> she wouldn't admit to it if she told if, if you asked her <laughs> uh, but but so i i went in looking for this one thing and as soon as i walk in the door the woman rushes up to me which i love you know hey very attentive and sure you know hey how you how you doing can i help you with anything and i said sure and i you know i said look i'm just browsing but i i am looking for this one thing and she's like oh sure you know i'll i'll, I'll show you where that is and i said okay well you could just point to it but you know she wanted to show me where it was and i you know she's working for her money so i figure she's okay bored fine. out of her mind right you know so she shows me you know i pick up a bottle of this board cream looks pretty normal and i'm like okay well you know i'm gonna look around and she grabs the board cream out of my hand and she (laughs) goes and she goes i'll just take this to the to the counter and i'll have it up there for you when you're ready and okay yeah so i i immediately thought oh well that's kind of strange and so i continue walking around the store and as i'm walking around the store every different employee that worked there had had come up to me after my first like two thirds pass through the store <laughs> to ask me if I needed help finding anything. And so to me, and this is maybe, and I, I asked my wife if like I was being crazy about it, but you know, she said she didn't think I was, but I felt like they thought I was like getting ready to steal from them mm-hmm. or, you know, like, Oh, I'm sorry. I, I look like I'm that hard up that I'm going to come into your fancy French kitchen store and steal your ten (laughs) dollar cutting board cream that's what Uh, i was gonna ask is how much was that cream it was ten dollars it was ten dollars and you know for for my friends who know me and even for people who don't know me hopefully they would have enough common decency and respect to know that if i was gonna steal anything it wouldn't be something that's ten dollars that's ridiculous no you go for the big stuff of course, big ticket items. I try to walk out of there with a uh, sous vide or, uh, you know, <laughs> $400 Le Creuset uh, Dutch oven. You right. Know? I'd shove that in my pants and walk out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I'm not trying to steal from these people. And and so when I left the store, I, I just bought the, the thing that I went in there to buy. I didn't buy anything else because I was like, I, you know what? I don't really want to spend money with people who uh feel the need to like grab my purchase and take it to the counter before i'm ready to check mm-hmm. out so anyway that's my crotch talk moment but uh, have you guys had any experience with anything like that I... oh man um nothing that comes to mind the only thing the first thing i thought of when you started the story was i remember being at a clothing store years and years ago and if there's one was thing it I closed time, <laughs> it was not. <laughs> if there's it was Boot Barn, no, just kidding. Uh, if was there's it Miller's Outpost, oh god, no. <laughs> if there's one thing, Sorry, I, these people don't know what we're talking about when we say those names, huh? Most likely not. If there's one thing I hate, it's shopping, and there's another thing I hate, it's being annoyed while I'm shopping because I'm already annoyed from having to go shopping. And so I remember this person was extremely attentive. Not so much like with you where it's like, can I get you something? Can I go hold it up here? Can I get this out of your hand so you don't fucking steal it? It was more like I would go to the dressing room and like, hey, can I get you another size? And can I get... It's like, oh my God, no. I can And at the time, I was with a different... I was dating a girl and she was with me and she was standing outside the dressing room and like, I, you know, I asked her, hey, go get me a different size pair of shorts, whatever. She was doing it and then the guy would come over like, hey, can I help? Blah, blah, blah. And then another girl would come over I was like, do you think I'm stealing this shit or uh, are you like this with everybody? 
Well, it turns out I watched them. They're like that with everybody. It's like, God, I couldn't get out there fast enough. I was like, we're going somewhere else. This place is fucking annoying. Uh, so not quite the same as you, but I was definitely annoyed. Well, let me, can I throw one thing in? Cause I just thought about it. Okay. So this is really what kind of got me at the end. Okay. So I'm at the register and there's a woman in front of me buying something or I don't know, maybe she was just talking to the attendant. I don't know if she actually bought anything or not. She was probably stealing something. (laughs) She could have, she could have been nice old lady. She looked nice. So she was probably doing something shady, but anyway, so she's standing there and she's talking to the woman who took my board cream and put it in the checking area. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm waiting for, I'm waiting patiently for her to be done so I can buy my thing. So finally I get to the counter and I was like, Hey, you know, that's my board cream over there. You brought it to me. And she kind of looks at me like, uh, like she vaguely remembers me <laughs> asking her to do or her, her doing that for me. And then she, and then I was like, Hey, you know, I'm sorry. I didn't really find anything else to buy, but I do want to get that. So, you know, thank you. I appreciate you taking the time. And she hands the board cream to the other lady who's at the check, check stand and is like, hey, can you check this guy out, basically? <laughs> and oh, then she geez. walks away. And I was like, okay, that's you know kind of rude, but that's fine. And then the lady who she handed the board cream to goes, what's your name? And I don't know why they need my name, but res- you know, reflexively, I just gave her my name. Right. And then and then she goes, so are you returning this or? Oh, jeez. I wanted to fucking buy it. I was like, I'm trying to buy it. I would just like to leave now, please, with some shred of dignity left. Like, you know, I'm... (laughs) And you're like, and next time I'll get it from Amazon and not shop local. Right. Yes. I'm I'm so sorry. Yes, I was trying to return it because my my paycheck for $7.85 came in (laughs) and it didn't clear, so I can't buy this, unfortunately. So, yeah, I've I've mortgaged it and, you know... (laughs) I'll I'll take my <laughs> refund, please. I'm sorry. This story is way too long, but I, <laughs> you know, I don't get this irritated very often, and I I left thinking like I'm an insane person. I'm I'm uh, why should why should I be bothered by these people? But it's because you know, they're French, and I don't think any of these people were French. <laughs> <laughs> they were all white. They were all just super white, regular American, you know, weirdos. They're not French. They're frauds. <laughs> yeah. At that point, I think I would have said, yes, I am trying to return it. I paid cash and I can't find my receipt. A store credit would be just fine. <laughs> that would have been pretty good. Damn, Scott, I wish I could think of my feet <laughs> like you. Well, I have an evil mind. He also has a lot of uh, experience with returns. Yes, true. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah. I hear it all. <laughs> Scott used to work at an establishment that sold clothing and people would come in and, and buy oh clothing, wear it, keep the tags on and return it smelling like shit. It's terrible. It, one lady in particular that did it every all the time, she would buy it, bring it back like two nights later, whatever, and it smelled like perfume and cigarette smoke. And we take it. Yeah, you took it all right. <laughs> At least the company did. Yeah, that's that's insanity. So yeah. Well, thank you guys for letting me vent. I'm I'm sorry I took so I don't long. blame you. That's that's a I'm, I think I'm gonna go shop in there. They think you're bad. Yeah. Wait till Scott shows up. Oh boy. Sir, uh, do you even know what a cutting board is? What fuck you? <laughs> Uh, well, in that case, I hope you feel better after getting that off your chest. Thank you. I do. Oh, good. <laughs> hey, where's your all's beer? <laughs> you know what we need? We need Nicole to get in there. Oh, man. Y'all out of beer? <laughs> Y'all out of cream? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all out of cream? Uh, old timey word of the week, Connie Wobble. Connie Wobble. It's uh, eggs and brandy beat together. Uh, mm. This is primarily a breakfast drink, and it comes from the land of Ireland. Sounds worth trying. Primarily a breakfast drink. Yes. Uh, by the way, raw eggs. So eggs and brandy whipped together. I feel like this isn't an Irish thing, and this is just something that American people attribute to the Irish. <laughs> like this <laughs> is. I, I feel like this is definitely, definitely, you know, not cool as an Irishman. Well, I was surprised to see brandy. I would have thought Irish whiskey. Well, no, we'll drink anything. I mean, sure, but I mean, if you're in Ireland, why aren't you going to have some good Irish whiskey with your eggs your well, raw eggs that's, that's true isn't that what eggnog is it's brandy and eggs and i is there something else in it in eggnog do you does anyone know what eggnog is i don't know scott do you know i don't know i first of all admitted uh admission here i hate uh, eggnog i used to hate eggnog but my wife loves eggnog and i 
found that if you put enough booze in anything, you can like it. It's true. <laughs> I don't not like it. It's, I'm not crazy about it, but I mean, I'll drink it. I mean, just this past season, the uh, pharmacy, the Costco pharmacy at work at, they had it on sale. So, eh, what the hell? I'll buy a bottle. It's on sale. Traditionally, uh, eggnog is made of milk or cream, sugar, raw eggs, and one or more alcoholic spirits and spices, often vanilla, nutmeg, uh, and other, oh, and cloves. Some recipes call for the eggs to be separated so that the egg whites can be whipped until they are thick. This gives the drink a frothy texture. I had no idea it was raw eggs in eggnog. I, I had no idea. I guess it makes sense because the name's fucking eggnog. <laughs> it has egg and it has nog. Well, and I think there's probably enough booze in it to kill any kind of pathogen or maybe they use pasteurized eggs or yeah. whatever. Yeah, just like a whiskey sour. You put enough whiskey in there, you're, you're not going to get... Salmon Any sour taste? Well, that too. <laughs> yeah. But the eggs won't kill you. So I'm hoping next holiday season I can look for some Connie wobble. <laughs> Give that a shot. I mean, hey, why wait? What are you doing tomorrow? It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gotta be a holiday. Wobble is just eggnog with no milk. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Maybe next time I'm not feeling so good. Uh, I'll start off my day with some Connie wobble, and the boss is like, "Hey, man, you you doing all right? Nah, just a little Connie wobble. Start the day." Yeah, next time I go out for breakfast, I'm going to order breakfast. Hey, you guys got Connie Wobble to drink here? Yeah, next time you go to El Taco for some Pastor, <laughs> ask for the <laughs> Connie Wobble, see what happens. It's a throwback from last week. Uh, all right, enough about eggnog. Let me tell you what I've got over here. Let me make a call to the pen. He calls to the bullpen for beer. That is correct. Uh, so I figured it was only appropriate to drink something from Colorado since Colorado Springs was our top listening city of the week last week. So I'm drinking Great Divide's Car Camper Hazy Pale Ale. I'm a sucker for hazy pails. I'm also a sucker for cornrows and manicured toes. Love those pails. Uh, 5%, 366 and untapped, and 83 on beer. At, man, 83, that is rough. Car Camper is the beer to fuel your next adventure. Generously hopped and dry hopped with Sabro. Oh. Sabro again. The aroma, hints of cantaloupe, mango, and coconut, and finishes evenly with a pleasant mouthfeel. Surrender to your wonderlust and be sure to pack plenty of car camper. And they say it pairs well with Hawaiian barbecue, uh, bacon burgers, bitter greens with mustard vinaigrette, Vermont cheddar with Cornish crackers, and grilled peaches with cinnamon. I first had this at the Super Bowl. I needed a, a beer that would go good with barbecue. And we were perusing the aisles of uh, Total Wine, which I think is a California thing, and uh, found this one. I'm like, all right, let's 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 give this a shot. Um, this is good. I I think the 83 on Beer Advocate's a little rough, you guys. Uh, the aroma, it's very tropical, a little pineapple up there. And what's weird is I think this has more on the sniffer than the uh, pizza port we had earlier did. Wow, I heard you get in there. That was, <laughs> that was impressive. Yes, uh, I had to dig my way through the glass. Can you do that again? That was awesome. <laughs> How was that? Oh man, I think I just I got feelings. That's 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 pretty amazing. <laughs> do we need to hit pause? Are you okay? No, no, no. We're good. We're good. I just uh, I quit. Uh, my wife and I quit smoking a few months ago, and oh, good you for know, you. When you did that, it just it just reminded me that like when you're taking that breath and and you don't hack your lungs out, <laughs> it's like wow. You know, and and obviously, you know, it brings a whole other level to tasting your beers when you can sure. smell them. You can take their aroma, and you know. So anyway, I, I appreciate that, Greg. Yeah. So anytime, tell um, us more about this, yeah. Sabro. I'm sure any old school wrestling fan is out there going, "Gold dust." Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. So I'm sorry. We we had to touch on. Otherwise, people would be yelling at their radios. Um, this is very tropical up front. You know, they talked about the cantaloupe. I don't get that so much. I do get the mango. I definitely get the coconut. I'm also getting some some pretty big pineapple notes on this one. And look, it's a hazy pale. Uh, it's not that hazy. You know, it's kind of like somewhat see through. It is light. It's five percent. It's sessionable as fuck. It was the perfect Super Bowl beer. I had uh, a good four or five of these, so I was happy to share about on the show. Uh, I don't know why Beer Advocate was so down on them, giving them an 83. I think uh, some people tend to not think about the style they're drinking when they rate it. They think about what they want to be drinking, and if you say, hey, this is a hazy pale, this is a fantastic hazy pale. It's light. 
It's a little hazy. It's juicy. It's trouble. It's got a lot of flavor for a, a pale at, at only 5%. So, uh, hey, beer advocate, back to what we were saying earlier. Uh, suck it. <laughs> You're going to give pineapple sculpin a 96, but uh, this has only got an 83. I think you need to readjust your ratings there. That was really aggressive, but I I love it. I mean, I'm glad that you're on on this like defense mode of this beer. Mm-hmm. I think they said they gave uh, pineapple sculpin an 89. Oh, that's but, right, and it was great. No, no, that but, was a 96. But that's okay because pineapple sculpin sucks, and I totally believe you when you say this beer is awesome, and I'm gonna buy some as soon as I find it. Like like legit, uh, you know, no one sent me any free beer. I I bought this. I really enjoy this. This is a great warm day or you're eating a bunch of barbecue and you're not looking for your beer to fill you up you want that meat to fill you up like i had a bunch of uh uh, hot links a bunch of sausages with this beer it was fucking phenomenal it was so good and i'm enjoying the shit of it right now with no food this is the first time i've had it without food it's great it's sessionable get over yourself beer advocate that's right now we're just making enemies aren't we yeah um i will save the listeners some time you said total wine was just on the west side Mm -hmm. Uh, it's in 26 states oh look at that yeah it's like uh, for those more than half the union. That's right. Damn it! Now I have to cancel my email. <laughs> uh, and it's like I don't know. Is, is Bevmo bigger? If people don't know what Total Wine is, it's like Bevmo. It's just you know beer and wine, I think that kind of stuff. Bevmo. What's is Bevmo? Bigger, I've but... I've heard of a store called Beverages and More. <laughs> <laughs> is that? That's very uptight of you. Well, I mean. What are you talking about, Greg? Are you talking about beverages and more? I, I am. I'm talking about beverages <laughs> and more. It's not and to why. It's total <laughs> wine and more. There's no more. It's just to why. That would be a great name. To why? Yeah. Yeah, we should work on that. We should Isn't rebrand t- the show. Yeah. Isn't but, it also and more? Or is it just total wine? I honestly, I don't know. I'm there all the time because that's what's closest to my house. It's and more. It is and more. They're all and (laughs) more. It's a good thing because they have more beer than wine. So this podcast should be the unfiltered gentleman and more. (laughs) (laughs) I agree. Actually, that's a great idea. Let's let's talk to the higher ups. Have a board meeting. Yeah. Let's move on to a little booze news. Extra, extra. Drink all about it. It's time for booze news. Well, Boston Beer has uh, quite the revenue from 2020. They reached $1.74 billion, thanks highly in part to uh, Truly, the seltzer. But uh, turns out they can't keep up with demand on their seltzers, and they're having to use third-party uh, co-packers and producers to get it out there, which they're losing huge money on shipping because of that. So they're hoping to expand production so that they can reap the rewards in 2021 and 22. Whoa, wait a minute. Did part of the douche market go from uh, White Claw to <laughs> Truly or what? Apparently so. You know, I'll tell you, like, I'll have a seltzer here and there. It's like a good in-between beers drink, uh, especially because, you know, we're, we're low carb over here in this household. And if I'm going to drink a seltzer, it's Truly because it's the only one not owned by Big Beer. Oh, really? Who owns White Claw? Uh, well, I don't. God, it might not be Big Beer, but they're also not craft. So, let me rephrase that. Truly is the only one that's craft, so it's the only one that will buy. You know, of the big ones. Obviously, there's smaller ones that are are craft, but of the ones you can you know find at Costco, <laughs> Truly is the only one that's craft. All right, can I give a totally douchey confession? All right, I'm ready for it. Yeah, get your douche on. Yeah. So, <laughs> we don't really do seltzers, um, but when we do, the seltzers that we get are and if you can find them good luck i mean i i've had trouble but the natty light seltzers oh god are the ones that we get and hear me out hear me out i mean i'm listening (laughs) the names of these seltzers are the catalina lime mixer they have some good names aloha beaches (laughs) and i don't know what the other there's another one it's like class dropout or class clown or i don't know what it is but they taste great, and they're like 6%. So you get the extra ABV tag on them, as opposed to the Truly and the White Claw, which just come in at 5. Right. So they've got a little bit more oomph to them. And, you know, you go to the store and you get a Truly 12-pack, you're probably paying, what, 18 19 20 bucks. The Natty Light Seltzers are like $12.99, 13 I so, will say, when we, get them, when we get the Trulys from Costco... They're right around a dollar a can. 
It's like 30 for 30 type thing. Right, but who wants to have a 30 pack of freaking seltzer in their fridge? How much room? Is, how many fridges do you have? Oh, we're not putting them all in the fridge at once. We're putting them like out in storage and bringing like five in at a time. All right, well, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. As long as you're not storing them in Marty's crate and cutting down on his no his uh, square footage, I'm I'm cool with that. Marty the Brew Pub is extremely picky. He only drinks IPAs. <laughs> he's a smart dog yeah dog I've, after my own heart right i have tried to give him other beer styles and he'll walk away like he'll i'll put it down on the floor in a little glass he'll sniff it walk away the only thing he goes after is ipas will and, he drink the made west pale <laughs> anybody with their right mind would drink the made west pale i remember doing like fun runs we did these adventure runs back in the day marty we'd get beer afterwards and a little beer garden marty one time i set my beer down as i was sitting down and I sat down. I was like, what the hell is that noise? I turned. It's him licking. He like drank <laughs> half my IPA. I was like, Jesus Christ. And I think that was like a Green Flash IPA, like the West Coast IPA. Like he's into his fucking hops, man. And he was supposed to drive home that day. He was. It wasn't a good scene. A good scene. Words are hard. Can I Can I just back up and give you a, just kind of a nerdy thing? That, Please. And uh, if it's not good, just cut it out. Um, I have were, those powers. <laughs> yes, you do. Talking about Bevmo, they're the West Coast company. Oh, I had it backwards. Yeah, they're only in California, Arizona, and Washington. Okay, I knew one of them. Beverages and more. Yes, sorry, beverages yes. and more. Not to confuse not, you. Not not total wines and more, but beverages and more. <laughs> Everyone's and <in> more. <laughs> they started off with a specialty, and then they wanted to sell everything. Yeah, you heard it here on Unfiltered Gentlemen and More. <laughs> started with the Bev, now we hear. <laughs> now uh, we more. Yeah, now we more. Uh, a drunk woman gets naked and steals clothes. She, I guess that makes her sans clothes at some point. <laughs> well, or extra clothes. Well, um, afterwards, yeah. Police said 53-year-old Melissa Don Hahn, what a name, ran up a $154 <laughs> tab at Mecca Bar and Grill and tried to pay with a credit card, but it was declined. She got angry at staff and customers, swearing at them and spitting on a man, witnesses said. She left and went to a nearby store called Cactus Flower, that's where she got completely naked and got clothes from the store. Her credit card was declined again, and she got mad, knocking things over and throwing a wine glass. So she left the bar apparently with wine glass in hand. Han left without paying. The items totaled $740. Police were called, and officers found Han at a nearby bar wearing <laughs> a Mecca bar, the first place, Mecca bar t shirt and bracelet that were both stolen. Han was then arrested and booked into jail on misdemeanor theft. Indecent exposure and disorderly conduct. Bail was set at thousand dollars. Way to go, Arizona. Uh, the only thing is, she was from California. Oh boy. Oof. Any chance her name was actually Allie? <laughs> That's why she's not on tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Going to Arizona again. Uh, and you then, know, I feel like this is an easy case of mistaken, uh, you know, like identity theft, and somebody had just drained her account, and the card should have worked. And I, I really, I feel for this girl. I think that, I think that she had a rough night, and we should just give her the benefit of the doubt because <laughs> she's not from Florida. Let's say it. She's not, not from, from Florida. Florida. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I mean, and she's from California. She may have been in Arizona, but. You know, who among us haven't been to Arizona and come under the influence of that? <laughs> well, I'm glad you brought up Florida, because in our final story for Booze News, a drunk driver yes. crashes into the back of a Palm Bay patrol Ooh. car. <laughs> a drunk driver crashed into the back of a patrol car as the officer was stopped at a red light, according to the Palm Bay Police Department. The driver, 32-year-old Daniel Noriega, by the way, the picture of this guy, he looks like he's in his 60s. Uh, was like Manuel Noriega <laughs> was slurring his speech, smelled of alcohol, bloodshot eyes. His face was red and seemed confused. Officers said they saw a 16 ounce can of natty ice sitting on the floor in front of the right. driver's seat. Noriega refused to submit a field sobriety test or breathalyzer test and claimed he didn't understand his rights. Records showed that he urinated on himself while being arrested. He's now facing DUI charges. <laughs> oh man pissed himself way to go florida i got nothing to say there no defense for that for pissing yourself well no for i mean uh, of course who among us but you know <laughs> he, he made it, it happens he to made it to, he made it too easy on them 
easiest DUI arrest ever, slam into the back of the cop car? Come on now. <laughs> At least like swerve around it and have a chase or something. Right. You make know? it good. Right. Come on. Come yeah. on. Get on TV or something. Mm. Yeah. Make it Florida. worth it. Yeah. Well, it, yeah, exactly. It's Florida. What do you expect? Uh, and then finally, we'll end it with this. We introduced the segment last week, Beer Faults and Adjuncts. It's where uh, you, the listeners, get to call me out and uh, tell me I was wrong about something. And potentially, I could add a little something to your life with some adjuncts. Last week, we mentioned uh, West Side Connection because we were talking about that West Coast Connection double IPA both Nicole and I were drinking. Well, oh, yeah, you were totally wrong about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we were talking about West Side Connection. As I started to say, like, you know, the, the, this group with Mac 10. And Nicole goes, oh, and, and wasn't that Ice Cube? I thought that was Ice Cube. And I was like, oh, yeah, it was Ice Cube. Then all of a sudden, I got thrown off. And we couldn't think of who was actually in the group. And, uh, well, her husband, Nick, gave me a lot of shit for it. Of course, is Mac-10 and Ice Cube. And then the final member was, of course. E-Fody. Wrong. Wrong. Dubsy. <laughs> oh, it was Dubsy. Damn. But, but thanks for being wronger than me. That makes me feel better. <laughs> well, there you go. Next week, you can say that I was wrong. <laughs> yeah, we'll have you on just for some uh, beer faults and adjuncts next week. Oh, I'm sorry. I got my Bay Area rappers wrong. Yeah. Uh, you know they're from the Bay Area when they want to ghost ride the whip. Dude, are you a millennial? That's so you're so old. What do you mean? Jeez. Ghost ride the whip? Ghost ride the whip? That's what all the NorCal rappers do. All right. Why don't is you that whip they... and nay nay or whatever? <laughs> what is that when they run next to their car? Yeah, it's when they get out of their movie. I knew that. Yeah. Oh my god. Wow. I guess I am old. <laughs> Scott <laughs> knew wow. that. Or maybe I'm young. Ghost ride the whip. Ghost ride the Okay, I'm sorry. I'm gonna hit some music here. Uh, we should wrap this thing up quickly. Brian, thanks. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Me too. Uh, Brian, thank you for, for hanging out with us again and, and joining along and drinking a beer. Thanks for having me, Greg. I appreciate it. Absolutely. We we enjoy hanging, and uh, it's nice to have you on the show. I don't have to plug any Instagrams or anything afterwards. It's <laughs> No, they can find me if they need me, but my wife is awesome. And, That's true. Uh, she has an Instagram. One hot mess. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> one hop mess. H-O-P. All, all one word. Can you tell I'm on Instagram all the time? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's exactly what you're going to say. I stole the words right out of your mouth. I, I apologize. Uh, you can find Brian at the French Cooking Store. That's where you can find him. <laughs> you can find us at The Unfiltered Gentleman and TheUnfilteredGentleman.com. And call us, 805-538-BEER. It's 2337. If you're uh, on the Twitters, at Unfiltered Gents and Scott's Unfiltered Scott, I'm Unfiltered Greg. Find us tweet us uh send us beer pictures and all that good stuff hope everyone's staying very well hydrated and on that note good night everybody